Hi everyone, welcome back. So this video is not just a review but we are looking at how the A620 board performs. The hero of this video is the ASRock A620M HDV M.2 Plus. Now this model is unlike their usual HDV models which is always the lowest in the stack of regardless what chipset. This model is the plus version that is better than their vanilla HDV. Now, before I proceed, um, let me share to you a bit of things about the A620 motherboard and then after that, we'll go to the overhead view where I do the unboxing and after that, I'll, we'll talk about the performance and such. Now, the A620 motherboard, it is made to be affordable. Over here, I'm using the AMD Ryzen 9 7900, not the X model, it's just the 7900 non-X. Why? because it falls under the category of CPUs that officially will run properly on a board like this, which is those that are rated at 120 watts and below. And after all, if you can afford something that runs it, that is rated at 170 watts, like say the 7950X, you shouldn't be looking at A620 motherboards because they are really made to be affordable Cheap. In fact, if you look at this um, press deck from AMD for the A620 motherboards, you see that my configuration here is actually stronger than what AMD actually recommends for A620 system. Okay, admittedly, the 7800X3D is stronger at pushing frame rates compared to what I have over here. But hey, look at this. It is one with an RX 6900 XT. I would have wanted to put a 7900 XT or XTX as well, but I couldn't get a sample on time for this video. But regardless, this is already a 6900 XT and with the Ryzen 9 7700, which not so, it's not so much of a gamer setup, but it is still plenty sufficient for pushing frame rates. And what's neat about it is it's 12 cores, 24 threads, which is really great for multi-core uh, processing workloads. So, TLDR, it is not meant to be offered such a high-end specs because clearly you are looking at A620 motherboards, you are looking at something very affordable. The one from Astro here retails at just RM535, which is about US dollars, um, 120-ish. Yeah. So it is an affordable board and it's really meant to target for, like I say, how was it? Entry-level system or at least lower price system because the price is a lot lower compared to the usual say B450, the, did I say 450? I meant B650 motherboards. Of course, this depends on where you're from, right? Here in Malaysia, the price gap is quite far for an A620 and a B650. And you guys know that I am the country sales manager for ASRock in Malaysia. So I do plan out the boards that are coming in and their price and all that. Well, this model was selected because there is, it is good price and good features. We have uh, higher end models like the Pro RS model, but the price is, will be too close to B650 motherboards, of which I believe at a certain price point, B650 motherboards will be of better value. But this one, this one is RM535, which is about, like I said, USD120, affordable. I just placed a 7900 just to test the system, just to build the system where I can actually put my 7600. But we just want to know how far it can go. Definitely, it will not make sense to put any higher CPU on this motherboard. And yeah, that's pretty much that. So let's go with the overhead camera and I'll walk through you guys through the unboxing. Right, so now we are at the overhead camera. This is the box. The box of this board is small because the board is actually small. Now let's have a look at contents. Other than the usual stuff, M.2, the I.O. shield is uh, not built in. Okay, so don't miss that out when you're installing. And this is the board itself. Small, small board. Let's take a look. Now as I open up, you see that the board is indeed compact. Because it's just two dim slots. It has a VRM heatsink, which is actually plenty sufficient for the mid to low 
range processor. Well, when I say mid, actually what I'm referring to was like um, those with the lesser power draw. For example, from 7600 up to let's say 7800 X3D and 7900 non-X. Basically, anything 120 watts and below. Um, other than that, there are two things I wish to highlight about this motherboard. The first that is that it has two M.2 slots and they are Gen 4x4 M.2 and here the, the PCIe slot for the graphics card is still reinforced and then with well spaced out um, these are additional, those are just some of the two main things that I wish to highlight now additional stuff I see are PCIe 1 slot distance away from the graphics card is good so in case you want to add expansion there's slots and there's M.2 Wi-Fi key in case you want to add Wi-Fi other than that um, a fan header here and there's two more up at the top here right so one two three and four fan headers which is uh, very uh, very good actually and so yeah the two this uh, these slots are nice and that there's two to this uh, PCI Gen 4x4 for, for storage and then uh, yeah front SATA so that's pretty much it for my um, intended overview look at this uh, board as for the the rear you can see like the IO is like this and I think this is the should be the BIOS flashback let me see if there's any indicator yes it's a BIOS flashback button I mean nothing else will it, will it be used for right and you get USB Type-C too so typically ASRock's uh, HDV boards are the lowest end and usually without heatsink but this is not just a HDV this is a HDV M.2 plus with the plus there so it is a step up from the usual HDV all right that's it for this overhead view let's go back to the normal camera view right so now we are back in this video, yes, let's go through the benchmarks now. But for the benchmarks, I will not go through gaming benchmarks because you know, 7900, well, it's always 7600, regardless, it will perform, it will push the frame rates just fine. Unless I put an RX 40, RX, RTX 4080, 4090, 7900 XTX, those will be of a, a higher, higher uh, graphics processing capability and should not be fitting this build that well. Like I said, clearly it's for a certain target market. So you can guess what kind of setup those are. So we'll not go through that. But what I want to cover is how does the A620 motherboard support a higher core count CPU like the 7900 here? Definitely, I'm not putting those to a higher power draw like the 7900X, 7900X3D, 7950X and X3D. Those are out of the window. Although some of the models can be 130 watts, um, I forgot to check on that one, but never mind, regardless, 130 watts CPU, you still can put it. But we're going to use with this one because even though it's like uh, it's a below 100 watt CPU, 60, 65, um, it is still of a high uh, core count. And so I'm going to ex expound to you on how it's like running this CPU on an A620 motherboard. First off, this motherboard itself with a VRM heatsink and the performance is good. I ran the 10 minutes benchmark and I ran 30 minutes benchmark on Cinebench R23, comparing it on this board against running it on the ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrera, both using the same RAM kit, running Expo and everything else. The number is same in fact, due to the runtime difference variance and all that, somehow it was a little bit higher on this one for the score so the A620 works perfectly fine for multi-call workloads so for gaming you're assured there's no issues at all however this video was delayed a little bit because I wanted to do one extra test I wanted to see what it's like running an A620 board without the heatsink on the VRM because there are lower priced A620 motherboards without heatsink so, well, this board, the heatsink was easily removed, so I try it, and here's what I can tell you. If you are going to run multi-core workload or run it along, like, um, if you have bad airflow running multi-core workload and all that, it is going to hurt the performance 
or if, if it's a one round uh, Sydney Bench R23, it'll, it'll be a 30 second um, task. So it'll go through just fine. The scores are exactly the same. But if I run it for 10 minutes or 30 minutes, in fact, I did, I did just 10 minutes, you can see that when I did a 10 minute run halfway through, it throttles. It throttles so bad. This is a screenshot of or one of the moments where the all the calls are running at less than one gigahertz, which is let me just show you how how it throttles if it does not have a VRM heatsink. So take take note of that. Basically, if you are running a, a, a motherboard with no VRM heatsink, bear in mind, probably not a good idea to not run seventy nine hundred with um doing multi-core workload stuff you still can you still, I mean I'm just testing it I'm just showing you the potential of it throttle when it is really heated up and all that you still can run the 7600 and the 7700 and all that and it'll work just fine because gaming workloads so the VRM isn't that that, that um, stress and yeah it should be working fine but personally personally I would highly recommend go with an A620 motherboard such as this one with a heatsink so you have a peace of mind. You don't have to worry about it's throttling or whatever else. And uh, let's hop back to what the, the Astro A620M HGV M.2 brings to the table. Well, it is an affordable board like what I highlighted in the uh, unboxing in the overhead view video. The nice thing about this board is, is that it has two, two M.2 slots which are PCIe Gen 4x4 which from what I've observed many boards at this price point does not have and that aside I like that it has this uh, steel reinforced PCIe slot and that it has VRM uh, cooling at least the heatsink on the VRM so it's pretty much that personally I think it's a solid board um, uh, just at least based on what I've tested here so far yes that's it for this one but more importantly other than being a review of this motherboard, okay, or telling you the, the strength features of this motherboard, what I hope to bring to you is it settles your curiosity of how a 620, A620 chipset motherboard runs and when with running without VRM hissing, what are the potential issues that you can face. Now, it will not power down, it will just throttle once it hit a certain threshold, but as you can see, it got to that threshold with 5 minutes of running Cinebench R23. So if you're not doing that, chances are you are just fine. But it goes back to like what I mentioned earlier. If I were any one of you looking for an A620 motherboard, I'll go with one with a VRM heatsink for the peace of mind. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Do subscribe to my channel if you haven't and bye bye.